I'm with Mark Cameron here at the Newland Bowling Club at this wonderful, uh, well, relatively new complex here, uh, an indoor, uh, yeah, indoor sh green they've got here, the one indoor green, of course, that's going to be the headquarters shortly uh, for the bowls 3-5. Uh, so, welcome, Mark, and um, yeah, let's get into it. Shall we? So what we're doing, everyone out there watching this, and don't forget you can share this, you can do you know, do what you like, actually, um, but we'd like as many people as possible to share. You can't delete it, though, Kevin. <laughs> no, you, you definitely can't. can't. It. It's, no, on it's on the web once it's there. It's, it's there, there for posterity, yeah. it's there forever, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, no matter how much you dislike this. But we, yeah, we, we're responding to the questions which people have sent into us, and and we'll go through those, and then Mark and I'll have a general chat about a number of uh, a, a number of things, in fact. So, first question we've got is about the Nationals. Um, why have both events in the same island at different times? Yeah, I think we've answered this one uh, in, the, in a past session, actually. Um, yeah, we, were, we looked at those that applied, uh, and there were limited uh, applications. Uh, the only one out of the South Island, uh, from a Nationals perspective, was really um, Southland. And we just felt that last year with it being Dunedin, that it was probably appropriate to go well into Auckland this year. Um, next year, um, uh, I'd suggest there'd be bloodletting if there wasn't uh, one of the nationals in the South Island again. So, so there'll be the nationals will be back in the South Island. It's just a good opportunity to, um, uh, you know, to, to, I guess, to do the split Wellington Auckland this year. Yeah, I, and, and as a first, I, you know, it's good that we, although it won't be good for everybody, but the pairs and singles, of course, in Auckland, and we're looking for a big entry in yeah. that. And so we, we are moving the event for the first time where the big populace is, so we hopefully that's going to get the local support to give it a good impetus, good starting point in, in the first year. Yeah, I mean, this was about uh, trialling some different things. I mean, um, we've, we've said, said in the past that our numbers have been dropping year on year on year, so bring the Somerset Nationals, um, splitting them up so the singles and pairs are in one area and the fours are in another. Um, let's try it out. Uh, if the numbers don't, if it doesn't work, you know, if the numbers don't justify this, then then we'll go with a plan B. We'll look at, look at other options. Well, that leads into the next part of that question relative to the Nationals. Why don't we have uh, singles in one event and pairs and fours in the other for the Nationals? Yeah, um, that came up uh, in, in initial discussions, as did um, singles and fours and separating out the pairs. Um, it was just one of those ones that we, you know, we, we didn't toss the coin, but we, we went, OK, let's try it out singles and pairs together uh, and let's separate out the fours, uh, see how that goes. Again, if it, if, it's, if it doesn't feel right, and we'll survey um, as well, then, you know, who knows, in three years' time we may be talking having a conversation about pairs and fours together. So, and will Bold New Zealand carry on allowing composite teams in the, at the Nationals? Yep. Uh, again, that was um, uh, certainly a heavy conversation uh, leading into into um, this Nationals review. Um, you know, again, I won't say toss of a coin because that's not appropriate, but, you know, when we weighed the two things up, uh, we said, let's leave the composite model as it is. Um, you know, there's enough change happening in, the, in, the, in our bowls calendar. Uh, without throwing that one on the table this summer as well. Well, there's not really a great need or a great appetite to really change that as well, is there really? Oh, no, there is. There's a, there's a, I mean, I, I, I see it around the clubs. There's a lot of Surprising. feeling within the clubs that, um, you know, turning up to nationals and you come up a side that's, you know, got four blackjacks in it, uh, especially oh, the yes. fours. Mm, yes, so especially much, the fours. The peers, yes, but yeah. the fours. Yeah, that's a valid um, point. Yeah, so we, so they, we, we are conscious of that. Um, and that may well be a discussion. If this split works, then it may be that we say, yeah, you can have composite pairs, but in actual fact, fours might go back to club. I don't know. Let's, let's Just the point you made, Mark, is about the survey. And, and, and I'd say a pat on the back very early on uh, so far. Uh, there's a survey just got out, I think, just last week of uh, the Champion of Champions, and I hear this morning that we've had around 400 respondents to the survey. So yep. it's great to see, I think, that the bowlers are responding to all the communications that are going out by their clubs and, and of course, via Bowl New Zealand social media. So for all you bowlers out there watching this and sharing this, you know, there is the opportunity through these surveys, which will be done throughout the year, for you to have a constructive, you know, a constructive voice of which Bowl New Zealand are going to listen to. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, I, I, I like surveys, but I think there's a danger sometimes with surveys is you don't get the emotion and the sentiment through them. Um, so I think you need to balance them up. I think we need to ensure that our communication still remains face-to-face -face, uh, as much, much as we can, <clears throat> but that we use surveys, the likes of the Champion, champ, champ of, 
champion of champions uh, survey to just uh, to balance that up a little bit and, and you know and it's, it's, it appears to be a good good um, vehicle to use. So we're sitting here at New Lynn. Uh, for those who don't know, New Lynn is out in the western uh, reaches of, uh, of Auckland and it used to be a two green club and a, and a ladies club and they have got rid of or divested some of their land and they've now built this uh, indoor complex and this is where the televised event on Sky, the Bowls 3-5 event, which gets underway in a couple of weeks. This is going to be the reason why we're here today. This is the home of where Bowls 3-5, the televised event will be. So how are things progressing with the, getting this all in place with Sky, commentators all sorted out, fields all sorted out? And so yeah, good. Um, we, this week, we, uh, this week, next week, sorry, we, we, we'll start putting out some releases in terms of uh, the fields out, out to the general media, the commentators, etc. But it's, it's tracking really well. We had the six uh, clubs up on last Saturday, no, Saturday before last, uh, for a trial um, uh, session. Uh, so they came down here and used the facilities. We had some of the gear uh, in place. Um, it's, it's, tracking, it's tracking well. question has been asked to me as well is, is Bowl Street 5, uh, the, the, the televised event, is that going to be on the TAB? Is it going? Oh, no, they're not. Yeah, so no, it's, it'll be on Sky Sport only. Um, they aren't, uh, should we say, streaming it through. Uh, but will it, will it be a, 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 a betting facility on the TAB Sports um, Programs? Uh, yes, they will. So um, uh, you know, TAB is a is a big supporter, or New Zealand Racing Board is a big supporter of sport in this country, and and our sport uh, does have betting options for the bowls three five. Great. So also, it's been asked: Will the selection criteria be the same for next year as what was this year? Um, selection of the clubs or the players within the clubs? Because we we get that question a bit. Is is um, is who selects the club sides, uh, and our reply is pretty simple, it's the clubs. Correct. Nothing to do with Bowl New Zealand, yeah. you choose them. Uh, in terms of the clubs though that we select, um, assuming that everything goes well and assuming Sky Sports wants to carry on with this product, this Bowl 3.5 product, then we have put it on record already that those five sides, uh, the top five sides from this year's competition, we would like to see come back in next year's competition. Uh, and the sixth place side will be replaced by the winner of the National Interclub Bowls 3-5 competition. How's the sort of pickup been for the Bowls 3-5 from a provincial regional point of view, which is now a new event out there? Of yeah. course, the winner of that, as you rightly say, comes forward to this, the Bowls 3-5 televised event. Yep. A good number of centres uh, running with it as an event? Yeah, look, I, you know... I hesitantly said um, to my board early on that our priority of 3-5 this year is television. Uh, and if we get 10, 12 centres taking part with an interclub this year, I'd be pretty pleased. Uh, and if we get, I don't know, um, 15, 20 clubs doing it in terms of their business house, I'd be pleased. Recognising that year one's about television, year two, let's see how this thing develops and grows. Um, we've got about 18 or 19 centres, I think it's Fantastic. 19 centres, uh, that have um, signed up for Bowls 3-5. So that's really good. Um, haven't seen a lot of evidence of Bowls 3-5 um, replacing the Business House Twilight competitions and to be honest I, I wouldn't really expect that to really eventuate until until the television products got going. Yeah, until can, people can see what yeah. all about it and the, and the vibrancy of it and the quick fire action and all that sort of thing. And, and, and we're talking February, March, April next year yeah. to January, February, Correct. March, April. So will the, in regard to the televised event, um, the clubs will always have the prerogative to be able to pick a player or players from outside their club to play in the, the league as, a, yeah. as like a guest player. I, like I know Ashley Jeff Coates playing for Gore as an example. Is... That's been a topic of conversation a little <laughs> bit. Oh, um, no. so, yeah. I didn't mean to. No, no, that's all right. I mean, the reality is that, I mean, uh, Ashley's a member of the, of the Gore Bowling Club. You have to be a member of the club. Right. The fact that you don't live in the town is not, is not the rule. It's, it's are you a member of the club? Um, and we have a couple of, that scenario has been happening for years, yes, where yes. players from outside of town have been, you know, had a membership within that, that club. So, well, we've um, seen that in the club, isn't a case in Port Yeah, well, with Eastbourne, yeah, yeah. well, Eastbourne being one of them. Yeah. So, um, uh, no, I don't, there's no issue here. I, I think that that is what it is. Um, you know, and, and ultimately, you know, I do want competitive sides in this competition as well. So if that means that they are widening their recruitment um, you know, span, then, then that's fine. Pathways is the next, and of course there's been multiple questions asked about this from various, in various ways, so 
what is, you know, where are we at with Pathways? Is it dead, just gone to sleep for a year? Is it under review, yep. un- under survey? Or? Yep, so um, uh, all, all good points, and, and we've covered them before. Uh, f- um, this is where the Champ and Champions discussion is coming into play now. So um, the feedback out there was that we needed to retain a pathway for the club bowler to achieve a New Zealand title. And given that Nationals you know, has composite sides and, the, and really the only other competition is the intercentre, um, which is the best regional players, we didn't really have a pathway there. So what we're envisaging is that the champ of champions, if the feedback is positive from this current survey, the champ of champions will provide that pathway for the club bowler. So Kevin, when you win your club title and you go on and win your centre title, that you are then eligible to go and play in a New Zealand competition. It has to be a very little club to a very, very little centre for that. To there's, a, there's, a, there's a few clubs that we could <laughs> assign you membership to. Kevin. Thank you. Yep. So really, what we're really saying is, and I, I can see the validity in what you're tr- doing with the, the survey, because with the pathways and champion to champions, you've really sort of got two events, but you can get a, you can actually condense it and, and do it. You can do it well with one, can't you? Well, you, and, and what we're doing here, the idea behind the Champion Champions is that we're not adding to the existing centre competition. We're not cluttering the Correct. Exi- existing Correct. calendar. We're using the, the existing competitions at club and centre level for Champion Champions. And all we're saying is that, you know, at a point in time, you deliver your centre champion in singles, pairs, triples, fours, or whatever it might be, to the, to the New Zealand finals. See, I think the real positive from this, Mark, because we've got to wait and see what happens, of course, but, but you went on that road show earlier on this year, and you went right around the country. You've seen all the centres. You've seen, I don't know, him, let's say hundreds of clubs that you've met and spoken to and had, had commentary with. There's been social media, all sorts of things. And... Now what's crystallised out of this is you've listened to all of that commentary and, and so too of the, the staff at Bowls New Zealand and, and the board because I was at the annual meeting the, the other week. So back on, we're, we're talking funding. We're back. We answered the funding question, didn't we? Before well, we, went we saw, well, 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 we've got to try and get to this. Yeah, well, here, well, yes, we did. But So Bowls New Zealand, how are we going to help clubs to yep. be financially we'll talk sustainable? About, we'll talk about the levy model later on. But we are now starting to... Um, uh, embark on some commercial arrangements. Um, the club insurance is, is one. So, uh, and you'll be well aware that we um, uh, we have a club insurance scheme. Um, we uh, anecdotally um, we have got about a hundred applications in for club insurance at the moment that see on average clubs saving eighteen percent on their insurance bill. So that's something that Bowls New Zealand's been able to generate. Uh, we have an uh, arrangement now with Preble Seeds. Uh, we've got one with a clothing company to, called Dynasty who have replaced BLK. Um, we have a relationship with Tower um, still. Um, so we're starting to now generate some revenue not only for Bowls New Zealand but for the clubs. Uh, and this is a space that I think Bowls New Zealand should and, and can help and help out more. Yeah, and, and that, if we go back many years, Mark, that was sort of a, that, that was sort of a place, but not what I would sounds awful, but it was not really managed in place, that's really what I would say. So if we don't like talk about the, be the seeds or the insurance or whatever, I think the message out there, the clubs, is you know, Bowles New Zealand are communicating, they are trying to open up new commercial channels. The, rel- the, good re- the reliance around that to help the clubs from a financial aspect is to support it because yeah, it is yeah, going to yep. save money but on their balance sheet. But, but ultimately it? it's the club's call. It's Absolutely. The, the, the club belongs to the club. Um, so there's no, we're not mandating anything here. We're just saying if, if, if Bowls New Zealand comes along with a financial arrangement that works for you, then take advantage of it. If it doesn't, then, or, or it's just not for you, then so be it. I also think that we, you know, in regard to, you know, being financially sustainable, I think there's a message out there to clubs as well, is that, you know, that to, to, to work within their local community of where they might be able to, I don't know, do bits and pieces, which is going to... Look, every $100 that is added in profit to your balance sheet, it's $300 that you don't have to fundraise for. Yep. So it's a matter of finding those ways... Uh, to, to do so, and exactly. um, talking about funding and finance, and it goes back to the point you made before. Do you think the user pay model is stopping the sport from attracting, developing, and keeping talent in the game? Ah, oh, it's it's a reality of our sport. It's a reality of most sports in New Zealand, outside of the Big Five. Um, is that user pay is 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 how it works? How the model works? We can't be expecting the community game 
to pay for our, our top end high performance athletes. That's just not a reality. I mean, the community, it's, you know, we struggle already just to, for the community game just to provide for the community. Um, so um, it's not a reality that, um, that we move away from user pays in any, any time soon. I think it was encouraging, though, at the Bold New Zealand annual meeting, and then we're going to talk about the annual meeting now so we can quickly move on to that because that's one of the questions, is well, what were the key results from the AGM? Yep. Um, so there's there's some good discussion at the AGM. Um, uh, one of one of the ones one of the key discussions though was the club levy model. So um, we had proposed um, um, workshopped around the country the, the the idea of levying a club based on the number of greens they have. Excuse me. Uh, instead of levying just on full playing members, um, it didn't go through. Uh, and you know that was probably forewarned a little bit. Or I, we saw that coming. Um, but it got close, um, uh, and what came out of the AGM was that, um, by and large, the bowls community agrees with the model, agrees with the concept of levying a club as opposed to just levying the full playing membership. Um, just the model that we put up wasn't the right one. Well, yeah, I agree with what you're saying, because I think, you know, sitting there at the annual meeting, that all the centres in attendance, there was certainly no negativity towards changing the model. Yep. It's about just yep. getting, as you said, the modelling right to yep. be able to uh, give, uh, give a, listen to that rain now, my goodness, we're really in the wet stuff. But to try and give parity, so to speak, across the board. We're so lucky we didn't do this on the outdoor green, <laughs> yeah, aren't we? we are. so, and of course, you've got to take into account the, the, the club that's got 10 members and the club that's got 100 yeah, members. Yeah, yeah. And Where we got the model wrong was we didn't allow for um, the smaller club. So we did some modelling and we said, right, if you're a one green club, uh, the fee would be, I think, 950 What we needed to do was say, actually have, a, have another fee structure for the very small one green clubs at, say, 450 500 bucks. And if that had it been there, I think we would have got a lot more acceptance of the model. And I think the other important message around levies and the AGM, and you touched on the point before, and to dispel the common thought out there that, you, that people pay all these levies, and, and they'll pay the levies, and they go to all our top players, etc. Well, that's not that's not the case no, at all, no. is it? No, it, it? And it's very obvious within our financials too, is that you'll see a line that says High Performance Sport New Zealand Funding in... Uh, and a line that's pretty much high performance money, yes, blackjacks yeah. out, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they roughly equate. So you know that that that, that myth. Yeah, and I think it's good that that myth gets dis- you know, gets really put in file thirteen because it's it's completely out of kilter. And moving on to that now is about high performance. Yep. After the disappointment of the Commonwealth Games, will we see ramifications in player selections and the whole team management structure? Yeah, um, uh, and, I, and I'm, I suppose I should have been a bit more cautious with that, with that quick response, but um, we have undertaken a review uh, of our high performance program from the Com Games. We were disappointed in our results, I've said that before, um, so we have gone through a review. Koshak Patel, who's our high performance manager, and myself, uh, have been uh, around the country, talked to well, we, probably in, in excess now of 100 uh, of our top end bowling, bowlers and coaches, as well as other sports. So we've visited the Crusaders and the New Zealand cricket and the rowings and the likes uh, and have built a high performance plan which we, which should take us through to 2022. Um, we weren't happy with our Com Games results. We could have done so much better. Um, we now need to invest and move away from just having a campaign plan to a high performance plan that identifies talent, that nurtures talent. Uh, that also identifies potential coaches and turns those potential coaches into world-class coaches. Because that's a, you know, as much as we invest in our talent in this country, one thing to come out of this review was that, by golly, we need to invest in our coaching because our coaching is, is lagging behind right now. I think it's fair to say that our coaching, you know, those volunteer coaches that we've got all around the country and we've had for a number of years, do a fantastic job, uh, let's say, at the club level and pr- provincial level. But as you know, by travelling around the country and talking to other sports, getting at that top level, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's that little bit extra that's really required to make it a top overall coach to handle all aspects relative to uh, high performance because it's not just about on the green. Oh yeah, and you can't have one coach who's, who's looking after 20 or 30 athletes. 
um, uh, you need to actually have dedicated coaches. It's, it's probably as much though about identifying a half dozen coaches or whatever it might be and actually upskilling them so that they understand and they can help the athlete with nutrition. They can help them with video analysis and coding. They can help them with the mental side of the game. Um, now, your community coach generally doesn't have that arsenal uh, of tools. Correct. So that's where we need to develop. And we need to, we need to develop some of these coaches so that they can work with um, some of the talent we have. Because we have some very, very good talent coming through oh, absolutely. in the bowls ranks. Absolutely. And, and, you know, we're seeing that come through there. We saw it last year and we're going to see the continuation of that. And I think it's encouraging for all the people out there watching this and sharing it and making comments, of course, which we, we welcome, that Bowls New Zealand have embarked upon uh, a positive and solid review after the Commonwealth Games and we now wait what the outcome of that's going to be, which will be announced um, some stage October, in the future. November, so we, we represent to High Performance Sport New Zealand in November. Um, but we, we're probably going to circulate out version uh, 16, I think we're on now, of our high performance plan, uh, which hopefully should be the final one uh, in the coming weeks. So, and also involving that, another question here, in the terms of funding allocation, do high performance players take funding away from grassroots? Well, we've actually covered yep. that point, yep. really, yep. and the answer is no. Yep. Um, with our entry level and competitions gone, how do Bold New Zealand plan to identify and keep track of emerging talent? Well, I think we've identified that in the in the first part of the question there, and there's certainly going to be a major push, I think it's fair to say. Yep, although we, you know, um, whilst we, we are working on a ranking system uh, internally within New Zealand, um, our, our emphasis going forward in terms of player development or player talent identification is probably going to be on the top 50 bowlers in the country. So we can't track the top 200, 400, 500 no, bowlers. No. Uh, if we can track the top 20 male, the top 20 female, the top 10 para, and we can, we've talked about para in the past, then that's a good, that's a good, that's realistic for us in terms of the resources we have. And if, of course, you've got the structure around the country with your coaches and talent identification, if someone all of a sudden appears out of nowhere and starts winning events and, yes. um, and because we've got the Bowls New Zealand, uh, you know, summer of bowls, uh, they're going to be identified at that point, aren't they? They and are. So, so we, we added at about version 14 of our plan, we added in a scouting network into our plan. So there will be a number of people around the country who will be at tournaments through their normal roles and through yes, their normal uh, bowls uh, life almost, um, who will see some talent uh, and then they will feed us back information on that talent, you know? Young fellas that, just don't, don't plus, exceptionally well. That's a positive because, you know, we've got young players, for example, uh, way down in the south is Gore, we've got them up in the far north, yep. and there's no doubt there's talent out there which um, it may but take a wee bit of time for it to be recognised, but if you've got these sort of regional talent scouts like other sports have got, yep. um, that, that talent will be identified far quicker, won't it? Yep. I mean, there's, there's an undertaking on the part of the athlete, though, to, um, to attend some of the big tournaments. Absolutely. So, so don't just win centre titles, is, is what we're trying to say. Or don't just win club and centre titles. You need to get along to nationals. You need to, you know, obviously represent it into centre. You need to get along to some of these tournaments around the country under the Summer of Bowls um, that, you know, have significant... Summer of Bowls, they they are in an open event, and there's also some Bowls New Zealand entries yes. in there as well. So yep. put yep. your hand up. and. Yes. And I look. I really, you know, from a, myself, a bowler, from a long time ago. Um, you know, for those who haven't been to a national event, whether it's singles or pairs, at this time it's a different format. Get to a national event because you're going to have the opportunity to play against the best players. You've got yeah. you know five or yep. six days of bowls, and it's not just that; it's meeting the other players, seeing me. You know. We, we, too many players try to judge themselves about how well they do inside their own region, whether it be Waikato or Thames Valley or Marlborough, wherever. But you've got to, to, to perform. You've got to get out. You've got to get outside that that, that yep. circumference, don't yep. you? Yep, you do. And yeah. I encourage people. And you know, on that note, of course, we encourage people to get your entries into the Somerset Bowls New Zealand Nationals, yes. which I think they close on the fourteenth of November. I think it is or around twentieth of November. But but get your entries in there. Um, There'll be a great event up here in, in Auckland. Uh, don't worry about the traffic because it's the downtime and, and there's, there's no, no uh, all there is yellow cut red cones, that's all. But the greens will be good and we encourage you, get your entries in. Yeah, so November, uh, late November for the singles and pairs, Somerset singles and pairs, and then I think it's February, late January, February for the um, fours.
So get your entries in. Absolutely. So just the last part of that, and you'll really answer it really, because about the high performance, are the coaching staff at Bolt New Zealand remaining the same for the next campaign? Well, I think really the quick answer to that is let's just wait till the review is all finalised and it's in, in its uh, structure. And, then oh, look, and we can answer it now. The reality is the structure is changing. It will change. Um, so there it's answered. Yep. Yep. So uh, and, and there's no names. Well, and, and the we've got a little bit of time, though, too. So our next major event is not till June of next year. Is that the Asia Pacific uh, Asia in Pacific. Australia? Yep. Uh, yep. And then we've got a very busy 12 months leading into the World Champs again June 2020. So we've actually got a little bit of time now. Not a lot of sports have this luxury, but we've actually got you know six to nine months to actually start to, to, to build this new structure, invest in this coaching, invest in these players with a lead up going into that, that 12 months. And as you rightly say, we're moving now towards a campaign approach to our high performance, not an event approach to high performance. Uh, well, we're leading to a, not so much a campaign, so we're leading to a identification of talent, de work, developing that talent. So we're actually building the talent and, and investing in the talent, be that athlete or coaches. Yep. So what's the selection criteria and process for development and open squads as represent New Zealand at Trans Tasman, Hong Kong and the BPL? Um, selection criteria? Um, so, I mean, it's, it's about performance, but at the same time, we are, when we invest in those squads, we are looking for um, work ethic. We are looking for coachability. We are looking for resilience. We're looking for, you know, are you motivated to be the best in the world or are you just comfortable making a team? You know, we want to we want to start asking those questions. So when we look at athletes, it's more than just how they how they performed on the green as well. I think you made a really valid comment there when you said best of the in the world because if we look at 2008 and 2016, at the World Bowls, we virtually at that particular event at that particular time. Um, we were the best in the world. But if we look at the other facets in between time, we are not the best in the world. And that's not been critical, but, but all this high performance program as well, I imagine, is to deliver that consistency about being the best in the world over a period of time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we don't want people just turning up to events and saying, I've made it, I'm at the yeah. event. Actually, it's the gold medal. Actually, we want to be the best in the world. Uh, in these competitions, and so that's high performance. All you players out there, whoever you are, whether you're a first-year bowler, a ten-year bowler, and I think another important thing to take into the calculation around high performance: don't get don't get missed about that you've got to be a young player to be part of the high performance program. It's not actually about age; it's about those points that you just made then yeah. that yeah. makes up the athlete in, in around high performance. It, you don't, it's not all about 18-year-olds. Oh, look, we should, and, and we, I'm hoping that um, we announced the, at the awards evening the other night um, the Bowls New Zealand Development Player of the Year female. Uh, it was Leanne Paulson. Correct. And Leanne won't mind me saying that, you know, Leanne's in her 50s. Yes. Um, Leanne is a, is a potential blackjack. She's put her hand up. She's put her hand up because yeah. she's successful. Yeah. Um, so it's not about 18-year-olds. And the other good thing that we are usually Leanne Paulson as the example, she has moved, not moved out of her county's Manukau Centre because she's very, I know at the awards event, she was very appreciative of their support. But what she has done is she's got out of just playing in county's Manukau. She went and played in the Australian Open. She went to Dunedin and, and played in the National. She played in the Inter Centre in Christchurch. So Leanne's moved herself out of just the, the domestic shell, so to speak to put herself performing against yeah, the best. Yeah. And that's an investment on her part. You know, She's had to invest time and effort into that. Um, unpaid, yep. um, user pays um, scenario, but she wants to be better. Great. So our last Fantastic. question is, what are, what are Bolton's going to do to help promote the bowlers from Australia that are, cool. are touring around a few clubs in North Island? Well, Mark and I had a quick chat about this before we came on, and I suppose it's a matter of knowing who these who these clubs or people are, when they're here and where they're going, really, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's just, just communication, um, but we are supportive. I mean, heck, you know, we send a lot of New Zealand bowlers to Australia every yes, year uh, yeah, on do. tours and the like, so, um, uh, you know, the more that come over here, the better. Can so, I, be, can yeah. I, uh, can, are we doing a close? Yeah. Can we do a close? Can I do a close here? I'll be thinking about it as we've been talking. Is about a year ago we sat and we had these sort of conversations, and your intro was, our, our intro was that the bowls community needs to change. I am very confident now, uh, and it's not my doing, it's the community's doing, that 
we don't need to change that, we are changing. So when you see a club like Nine Eye with 900 members, when you hear statistics like, you know, we've, we're sitting under this covered roof here at New Lynn, there are another 12 other projects like this happening within the next five years. So we are changing, we're changing our facilities, we're changing our membership structure, so we now have, and I'll, and I'll make you a bet, within five years we have more social members of bowling clubs than full playing members in this country. Yeah, I endorse that. We are changing, you know, a year ago, you know, one of our, one of our wish lists would have been, we need to be on TV. Well, we're going to be on TV. So, so we almost need to stop that, this conversation about bowls needs to change, to bowls is changing already. We're investing in new facilities, we're changing our membership structure, we're getting ourselves back in the media on the mainstream around TV, etc. Bowls is changing, and I think that's so, it's it's a really positive message. Um, it certainly is, Mark, and you know, and and you and you're so right of what you just said. Then, and and you know what we're seeing as well. I think like domestically of the number of clubs who are now picking up the positives of using social media to promote the activities in their club, whether it be a bingo night or whether it be business house bowls or the club yeah. singles yeah. or whatever it might be, that we're taking down, well I've used this expression before and I'll use it again and now is we're, the, the positive is we're taking off the mask of the past and we're, and we're walking into re reality, so to speak. Yeah we are, I mean we're sitting here in front of three cameras uh, and we're doing a, a, a live streaming um, through our communication channels. That's great. Fantastic. You know, we can now stream any bowls game anywhere in the country. Well, for, all you people out there as well, just as well, as part of the closing. It, look, Bowls New Zealand this year, myself, Mark, Tamara, uh, and, and Aaron, we, you know, we, we are live streaming a number of events uh, this year. We'll be bringing those to you from around the country. Yep. And other events like the Nelson Premier Fours, Taranaki Open Fours, Stoke Pairs, hopefully the Burnside Pairs. Now, all of a sudden, we've gone from having some spots on Radio Sport and News Talk ZB to, to global national coverage of a, a big number of our events. Oh, I mean, we, we get viewed by people in other countries. Um, and, and I, you know, even these sessions here, though, um, I'd like to think within the next two or three sessions that it's not me sitting in this chair with you, though, that we're starting to get out and about and actually interview some of the characters within our community. Yeah, great. Because I think that's really important. You know, our next session or two, I think you need to get Koshak in there and, and we'll talk high performance. Talk high performance, absolutely. Um, you know, from there, let's talk coaching programs let's talk about you know let's talk to to keith and mark and the crew here at new lynn about what they did here well it, true it's you know we yeah that's as you rightly say we look just in closing we don't need to change change is here it's positive it's yep. working it's happening and we're just everyone just get on the bus because it's going to be to your benefit your club's benefit and, and for the whole sporting market. And I think bowls in the last 12 months, Mark, in New Zealand has come a long way. And let's hope that trend continues as we look forward to the summer of bowls. And we welcome people out here to New Lynn. The starting date for bowls 3 5, the first night is 23rd. The 23rd of October. 23rd Tuesday. of October. Uh, and of course, it's live uh, uh, for every week on Sky. And get out here, have a look at the facility here. Oh, watch it on TV. <laughs> watch it on Sky. Um, get down to your local club if you don't have Sky at home. Get down to your local club, watch it at the club. Uh, and please, 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 if you like the product, you agree with it, then feed back to Sky TV, the media, your interest in it. Because your comments are really important to the success of this competition. Right, thank you, uh, Mark, and that winds up our, our visit out here to Newland, and uh, we look forward to uh, your comments, sharing this particular your feed that we've done, and any comments that come back to Bowls New Zealand, of course, are more than welcome, and we'll bring you our next, uh, well, our next chapter from somewhere um, in a month's time.